Milan, like many other European cities, boasts always tied to ancient traditions, magical arts and the use of herbs that have their roots in the ancient pre-Roman gallo cisalpine religion. These traditions, considered today now a simple superstition, have in the past suffered a strong repression in all Europe, so that since 1218 they have resorted, according to the data historians, what will be one of the moments most bloody and dark of our history, namely the Inquisition. From 1385 to 1680, over 300 years have been executed after long tortures, a height although never specific number of victims, among witches, sorceries, warlocks, over as well as other people, read to have a lifestyle different from that one imposed by the canons traditional, together of course to common evildoers and criminals. But what are the places where they live and work and then finally where witches were executed in Milan? One of the most famous places for execution was undoubtedly Piazza Vita, where once was pacing the anonymous channel Caled Vita, in the waters of which the Venteschi or Tanners washed leathers, their goods, before working them. But two other places have witnessed the violent execution of innocent men and women. One of these is Piazza Mercanti, where it happened the first execution of which we know, namely that of Gaspare Grassi from Valencia, 16 September 1385, in the New Broletto. He is killed before the eyes of great crowd, perhaps in a point where a plaque in Latin of 1300 still warns today and be careful not to fall into the hands of justice. In here, actually, uh, they were judged and often executed heretics and those convicted of other offenses. Perhaps the snake with mouth open in front of the door of this building could have some relationship with executions carried out here. Another execution performed in the Broletto, of which is new, is that of Antonia from Pallanza, burned in 1319 for paying a witch. Apart from the name and date of the execution, we have no further data about it. Another place where the scaffold was always ready to harvest their victims was in front of Basilica of Santo Stefano, where friars Dominicans keep their inquisitors' processes. Here are processed, tortured and killed Sibilla Zani in 1319, Pierina de Bugatti in 1319, a certain Giovanna in 5050, uh, of which only the name is known, Simona Ostera from Porta Rocomasina in 1519, and Lucia from Rissono in 1532. The scaffold of Santo Stefano was also in operation from 1200 until 1558 for the most diver diverse crimes, executions and crimes. One of the most obvious evidence of the Inquisition come down to us is the statue placed in proximity of Santo Stogio, representing the Saint Pietro from Verona, an Inquisitor monk portrayed with head pierced by a sword. The monk in 1252, returning from Como, was shot to death of Furcin in the head and stabbed in the heart by some heretics from Como who wanted to avenge the many victims he condemned. After 1558, the place of execution shifted to today's Piazza Veta, where are executed Marta de Lomazzi in 1599, Isabella Argenti in 1603, Nebe de la Fabene, Gabbana la Montina in 1603, Dora Lice de Volpi in 1611, Antonia de Santini in 1611, the maid bunting Caterina de Medici in 1617, accused of trying to poison his master, Senator Luigi Melzi. Then Giacomo Guglielmotto in 1920, Angela dell'Acqua and Maria de Rostrelli in 1620, Anna Maria Polomea, mistress, and Margherita Martigonia, her servant, in 1631. These are the last two witches sentenced to Milan, although Execution for other offenses uh, will continue well beyond until 1814. It is here where now stands the monument of, to the Bishop Martyr San Lazaro that occurred the executions by means of the will, in Parliament and other very cruel torture, 
close to the place where a column named the Colonna Infame was erected and then demolished. Place in memory of Gian Giacomo Mora and Guglielmo Piazza, accused of being spreaders of plague and therefore executed. The column was deemed to be a catalyst for negative forces, and it is perhaps for this reason which it was torn down. The scaffold where witches were burned was right at this point of the park. To access the scaffold, the condemned had to pass at Via delle Pioppette, and to do that they had to pass on the Bridge of Death, also called the Bridge of Sides. Then an infabulous walkway wood on which the convicts had to pass to cross the Vetra Channel. Right here, in this place, there was the bridge. Imagine how many people passing here have opened in a vein for something that mutates heaven in their favor, and the terror with which they approached what would be their place of torture, of atrocious suffering and death. In this place we can notice some stones, arranged to form a strange uh, bifurcation, perhaps they are in the relation with the bridge that led to the gallows, but there is no plaque or scene indicating the reason where these stones are located in this point. Last place of execution for uh, witchcraft is Piazza Santo Stefano Maggiore, where was strangled and burned Carlo Maurizio Anna for civil jurisdiction crimes, 1680, he was also accused of infamous writings, spell magical, diabolic holding and practiced. He was the last victim executed for witchcraft in Milano. Between June and August 1788 have been buried in the cloister of Santa Maria delle Grazie at the behest of Emperor Joseph II all documents relating the Inquisition of Milano, which covered the period between 1314 and 1764, denying history the true extent of the Inquisitor's processes in our city. A legend, perhaps repressible in the time of the execution of Carlo Maurizio Anna in Piazza Santo Stefano, tells that in Via Laghetto, at number 2, lived a witch that was in charge of all the witches of the Verziere. The house and the door still exist. From this home, those witches, in Milanese Strie, took the flight to reach the places where gathered the riding their brooms. In this area, no one ever got sick of plug, since the continuous load of coal discharged in the Via Laghetto Sport that was connected to the Naviglio passing the Via Sforza, kept away the parasites that carried this disease. It was most likely this fact to give life to the legend of Laghetto's witches. However, it is interesting to note that one of the Milano's tradition to ward off dangers and evil is precisely to hold a broom next to the front door, one of the many traditions now fallen into disuse but still practiced until a few decades ago. Although most of the places that were witnessed so much suffering today are much changed, it is still important to keep the historical memory of past events in order to prevent them from one day falling into total oblivion. And so even this episode of Milano Misteriosa has come to the hand. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Facebook page Milano Misteriosa, to be able to follow the other bits and to get additional information, advances and to discuss, propose and comment the topics discussed. So, watch the next episode and thanks for your attention. Bye.